Stephanie Kinman. I'm the Military Development and Engagement Specialist here at Ashford University. I served six years in the military. Same here on and off. Six years I did in the military. I was in the Navy. And two of those years I was attached to a Marine Corps unit uh, as a corpsman. So I have a little bit of experience in the military. I was also um, uh, stationed on a couple of Air Force bases. I have my undergrad in psychology and my master's is in military social work that I got from the University of Southern California. So thank you for joining us today. Just to go over the agenda, I'll tell you what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about who are Ashford students and who are student veterans on a national scale, and then what percentage of students at Ashford are actually military affiliated. We'll talk about the gap between military and civilian culture, and then we'll talk about some of the resources that are provided here at Ashford. And then um, we'll even talk about uh, what is to come next year for our military affiliated students that are onboarding at the university. And then we'll, if you have any additional questions between now and the end of the presentation, feel free to add them in the chat and I can answer them as we go along or I could wait and answer them at the end of the presentation. So just to talk a little bit about our students who we serve, 70% um, of our student po uh, population at Ashford is actually female. And then you can see from the map where our students are, uh, where we have the most concentration of our, uh, of our students. This is all of our students, not just military. Uh, so 51% of our students are from the South, which is pretty exciting. And then if you look at a little bit about our, the background of our students, we have 11% identify as Hispanic, 38% identify as either Black or African American, while 43% of our student body is uh, uh, Caucasian. Then we also have our students that 24% of our student body is between the ages of 25 to 29. Now, if we look at student veterans across America, this is on a national scale. Student Veterans of America is a nonprofit that did a study of all student veterans that are across the nation. And what they found is that 27% of them are women. And then uh, we have 46% of them have children with less than a third being single, uh, single and never married. And 80% of them are over the age of 25. So what does that sound like? That sounds like the students that we're already serving, right? So it definitely makes sense why student veterans really connect with our university. So if you were to guess, how many are, what percentage of students do you think are military affiliated? And I'll give you the opportunity to take a poll. So go ahead and answer in the poll. We'll give you a couple of seconds. Got one more out there that hasn't voted yet. All right, so it looks like a lot of you think that it's between 30 to 35 percent. You're not far off. So I'll go ahead and share the results of what everyone said. But if you click to the next slide, please. The answer is between 25 and 30 percent. So you guys are really close. Right now, um, it, change, it changes, it fluctuates anywhere between 25 to 27 or 30 percent. So that's a quarter of our student body is actually military affiliated, which um, if, we'll talk a little bit about military culture as well. So thank you for taking that poll, but you guys were really close. So if we're talking about military culture, uh, military culture has a significant impact on, our, uh, on student veterans. As service members, they're taught to work within rigid structures, uh, strict timelines, self-sufficiency, which makes them ex excellent candidates to be a student. But this also creates a sense of pride and humility and maturity where they often fill uh, a gap between them and their civilian peers. Um, service members, regardless of branch, they feel an automatic connection to other military-affiliated um, individuals, um, whether that's 
is in the same branch of service or just knowing that they have served alongside somebody in a different branch, they automatically have a bond that is created just from knowing that military experience. So it's been shown in statistics that military feel a, a closer bond and are more likely to open up and ask for help or seek guidance from somebody that's been in their shoes. So with that being said, we try to find a couple of ways for our military to connect outside of the classroom with each other. So the military community newsletter is a really great resource that was started about a year and a half ago. Since we started it, we've published 27 editions and have had over 1300 subscribers to the newsletter. On a monthly basis, this newsletter goes out talking about resources that are available to them through the uh, Ashford University, whether it's a, a new resource that's available to them or scholarship opportunities for our military affiliated students. But it also has relevant topics to them about looking for uh, transition advice when uh, looking for their next career, or if it's a, a national nonprofit that uh, provides some sort of service to them and their family that they may not be aware of. And so this goes out on a monthly basis um, to those subscribers. And we're trying to grow this uh, from a grassroots perspective instead of just automatically opting all of our students into it. Uh, it's more of an opt-in option for them. So the more that we could, yes, that, um, that statistic does include staff that have identified themselves as being military affiliated as well. So thank you for that question. All right, next we have our uh, Chance Care Mentoring Program. And we're gonna listen to a quick video from one of our Chance Care Mentors that talked about her experience being in the program. If you don't already know about Chance, Chance is a peer mentoring program that goes through a seven milestone program helping um, connect high achieving upper class students with newer or struggling students. And the purpose of this program is to connect the two of them, help develop the skills to make them successful here at Ashford University. And with our military students in particular, we have a separate track for them uh, with re resources related to the challenges that they face in higher education, which is oftentimes different from our, uh, thank you for being a mentor, we love to hear that. Uh, so our military track is a little bit different, focusing more on the challenges that military affiliated students face in higher education. So listen to this quick video. Hi, well, I'm Anastasia Faber, um, and uh, in the U.S. Air Force and stationed in Northern Washington. I had heard that Ashford was military friendly. There's, they have presence on some of the bases, and so reaching out and saying that I was military, I usually put that up front because there are a lot of challenges. The hours are crazy, sometimes unpredictable. Going up to a counselor, I wanted to be really up front, and they were oh yeah, we know how to handle this. <laughs> if I had something coming up where I wasn't going to be able to finish an assignment on time, I would always reach out to my teachers and they would always, we'd always figure out a plan. That was absolutely invaluable, actually. One of my instructors actually did uh, video lectures and it was just really exciting because I get to have that kind of one-on-one -on -one experience and I get to experience the classroom, but I'm sitting in my pajamas you know, on the couch. The community makes you feel like I can do this, I'm not alone. I had the same challenges that all those students have. I'm trying to figure out how in the world do you figure out how to fit school in with life and work and all the challenges that are, they recognize it, they see it, and they actually step out and, and say thank you. And that's amazing. So it sounds like we have some individuals that are familiar with the CHAMPS Peer Mentoring Program here in this session, and that's so exciting to hear. Uh, we love pairing up our military affiliated students together because they speak the same language, they have similar challenges that they face, and they really have that understanding and help uh, guide uh, tips and tricks on how to make it through higher education while serving in the military. We also pair up our military spouses together because they have uh, very unique challenges that they face as uh, students as well. And uh, pairing them up with another spouse that has that experience of what it's like for their husband or wife to go on deployment and being at home, taking care of the home front, uh, it's been uh, really beneficial for the two of them to connect and find that support with each other. So we really love and advocate for our chance for mentoring program. 
another one of our things that we have is a student ran organization, which is our student veterans organization. And I mentioned earlier that the Student Veterans of America is a national nonprofit that uh, is focused on military and veterans in higher education. And last year, we actually had our first ever student attend a national conference, and it was our president of our student veterans organization that you'll see down there at the bottom. And so Jennifer, she flew out from uh, San Antonio, Texas to Anaheim, California, and was able to attend the Student Veterans of America conference. And what's really exciting is um, it's going to be hosted this year in San Antonio, Texas, and we have five students that are actually going to be participating in the event. There's some breakout sessions that talk about stu uh, military students in higher education. They also have a huge career fair um, that gets them connected to Fortune 500 companies that are doing on-the-spot interviews. And so to help prepare those students that will be hosting at this event, uh, they're going to be connecting with our career services department to go over their resume, make sure that it's top-notch and ready to go for those uh, awesome employers, as well as prepping them for interviews so that they feel that they're really um, prepared to meet with some of those employers. And all the students that are going to be participating this year um, are actually either just graduated or will be graduated by the end of the year. So they'll be ready in January to meet with these employers. We have the group is actually um, on LinkedIn. We have grown from 88 members to nearly 700 in the last year and a half. So that's a huge growth. Uh, in letting people know that that group exists. Uh, the Student Veterans Organization is uh, on LinkedIn currently as a private group on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is a really great platform. They do a lot of work for um, helping military service members find their next career. So it's a really great platform to get them to start net networking with each other so they can build those relationships. And with, uh, with as small as the military community is, sometimes you never know when uh, you might run into somebody that's in your own backyard. So it's pretty exciting for the growth that we've seen in that student-run organization. And then we also have um, the Salute Honor Society. Now this is a national organization. It's not specific to Ashford. And uh, this is, um, Salute actually stands for Service, Academic, Leadership, Unity, Tribute, and Excellence. Doesn't that sound like your typical service member? <laughs> Um, and with, uh, with the Salute Honor Society, there's, there's obviously um, some scholar, scholarly requirements that you would have to meet in order to participate in this group. Um, for undergraduates, they have to maintain a 3.0 GPA, and for our graduate pro, uh, students, they have to have a 3.5 GPA. So it's by invitation only, and it's open to all Ashford University students that are military affiliated. And the way that students are notified is that they'll be sent an email giving them more information about the Honor Society and if they would like to uh, participate. So uh, there's a committee made up of a chapter advisor and a group um, of faculty and staff members that review uh, requests for the military documentation that's needed in order for them to uh, uh, t participate in this group. Uh, if you've ever seen one of our graduation ceremonies, you'll know which ones are the Salute Honor Society uh, members. They are the ones that are wearing the red, white, and blue honor cords at graduation. And last but not least, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Ashford Military Speaker Series. This is a really awesome um, initiative that kicked off uh, about a year ago. So um, we invite community partners or subject matter experts to come in and speak to our military affiliated uh, faculty and staff. We open this up for um, actually all of our staff and faculty and also our students to join in on some of these conversations that are really relevant um, for military. Uh, Lita Citrone is actually gonna be our keynote speaker that's gonna be taking place tomorrow morning. If you would like to join that session, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, she is flying down from Denver, and she is going to be talking about the value of a veteran in academia. She's got a TED Talk. She's amazing. She's a personal branding expert, and she's going to be coming down to share her thoughts on military students in uh, higher education. And uh, so just to give you an example of some of the past sessions that we've had, um, Jenny Dufresne, she actually uh, came in and talked about her military experience as a female in the Marine Corps. 
uh, back in the 90s when it was uh, few and far between. So it's just really awesome to see the partnerships that we have bringing guest speakers in to talk about their, either their military experience or the, the information that they have to share with that community. And we do like to share these later, um, we do, whether it's a recording or a summary of the events that take place. And they're shared through the military community newsletter and uh, archived through that channel. So if you missed it, you could always go back and learn about uh, a subject that you didn't get a chance to, to hone in on and the moment. And so one last thing I'll talk about, and everyone loves graduation, and who doesn't love a celebration? So we have a military appreciation event that takes place every graduation, the day before um, commencement. And um, the last uh, commencement or graduation ceremony to celebrate and honor our students that took place, we actually had um, one of the individuals that uh, tried out for our, the national anthem contest that we do each uh, commencement. He was actually an uh, a active duty Coast Guardsman that came all the way up from the East Coast and he sang the national anthem. And I was standing right next to him and I got goosebumps. So it was a very feel good moment. Uh, we share a video that talks about why Ashford loves our military students and it also gives some of our staff the opportunity to share their personal testament on why they love serving our military students. It was, it was a really awesome experience and we definitely love um, being able to celebrate with our students in person. So everything that I've mentioned um, about these resources and what I've told you about military culture and how student veterans don't always ask for help, um, they are really resilient and resourceful and are most, most of the time taught to learn to figure out a problem on their own. However, who doesn't benefit from some of these resources and how can we get them connected to our students? That's a question that a lot of people I've heard in the classroom. How come our students don't ask for help? How come they don't utilize the resources that you guys work so hard on? Well, now we're thinking about everything that I've shared with you today in this presentation is going to move forward in being presented as a military student orientation that we're hoping to have roll out in fall of 2018. And the purpose of this is to get our students connected, let them know about the resources that are available to them. And we know that at least if they've been presented with the information, they can utilize it when they feel the need to. Um, identify some of those challenges and conditions that may qualify them for our academic accommodations. I could speak for myself in higher education. I have some disabilities that I didn't realize that I could have received accommodations for. I get migraines and I um, and sometimes sitting, I did online classes for my master's program and I just took the hit for turning in an assignment late versus reaching out and asking for help. But had I known that that was considered a disability, um, I definitely would have utilized that. Not to say that I didn't push through, but I definitely could have had a better GPA instead of taking the hit. Um, so just letting some of our students know what they may not realize that they have available to them. And then um, also the importance of um, having that disclosure of affiliation at the university because our staff and our faculty want to support those students. But if they don't ever tell us who they are, it's hard to be able to accommodate them. So uh, we're definitely excited about the opportunity to roll out the student orientation and we're really hoping that it makes a difference for our students that are here at the university. So with that being said and sharing all that information, do we have any questions that are left over? No questions? Was I that good? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, we're ahead of schedule, so ask me anything you want. You could ask me about my own personal military experience. You could ask me anything you want. You got me for a couple more minutes. Just to get an idea, do, who do we have in the room? Do we have faculty? Do we have staff, students? I know we had a couple of people say that they were uh, part, had participated in the champ, peer mentoring program. Who's going to tune in and watch Lita tomorrow? Got some students. Three classes left till your master's. Awesome. All right. Great. 
Well, there's my contact information. If you guys ever have any follow-up information or uh, want to ask me additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, within the, the military community newsletter, I'm always looking for resources. So if you've ever utilized a resource or heard about one, feel free to send it my way. If you have a connection with someone that you think would have some information that's of value to our students and our faculty and staff, definitely uh, let me know because I'm in charge of finding those speakers for our military speaker series. So um, if you guys ever need anything, I'm here. So thanks for tuning in. How can you support military students in the classroom? I think just identifying yourself as someone who supports military and that you're here to um, accommodate them in any way that they need, sharing the resources that I've provided for you um, in today's session is also super beneficial. Um, but the more that we have um, our faculty and staff that maybe aren't military affiliated just share, hey, I'm, I haven't served myself, but I am here to support all of our students that either previously have served or are currently serving. Please reach out to me so I could best accommodate you with maybe assignments or if you need uh, you know, additional resources, getting them connected to the CHAMPS Peer Mentoring Program or uh, any of the other resources that have been shared today is a really good, great way. And then having that understanding that um, the more that you could educate yourself on some of the cultural pieces, knowing that uh, when you're in the military, you don't have uh, a lot of say in your timeline and schedule. And sometimes it will be in 24 hours, you're being shipped out and you're not going to have access to internet or phone for the next seven days. You know, those things really do happen. And I think as faculty kind of having that understanding that sometimes there's not the opportunity to kind of I didn't tell my professor because I was telling all my family that I was going to be out of touch for a while. You know, just kind of having that understanding that when they're asking for an extension or uh, needing a little bit more time to get something posted, I, I think is a is a key way that you can help in the classroom. And if you ever have a student reach out to you in a re asking for accommodations, know that it's very hard for a service member to seek out help. And so if you have any questions about whether or not they are military affiliated, you could forward, um, you could actually get in touch with their advisor, which you could find on the faculty um, engagement report or the FSC or faculty student engagement report, sorry. SCI. SCI, so you can actually find out who their advisor is and email the advisor to confirm, hey, is this person really military affiliated or are they pulling my chain here? So that way you feel confident in granting that leniency that you know that it's not just a random student, but somebody that's actually in that situation. So definitely connect with the student advisors. They, they are great with uh, being in those situations that uh, need that extra support. 